So the title of this video is 20 things to know before you book your next doctor's appointment. Hey, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. K and I'm a GP based in North London. Right, I work in the NHS and I know that the NHS and many healthcare systems can be incredibly complicated. There's just so many layers of bureaucracy, so many things that you have to bear in mind, so many steps to get from A to B, that for the outsiders out there, it can be a very daunting and complicated prospect. You know, so many things to bear in mind, like where do I go to have a doctor's appointment? Where do I go to have a blood test? I need to have a referral. I need to wait for this referral. I need to see this person before I can be referred to that person. I need to have this scan and I need to know, no, 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 no. There's just so much that goes on. And it's no wonder really that a lot of people end up, end up feeling so confused, frustrated, and even angry with the whole process, especially if their healthcare expectations are not being met. So, what I'm, you know, I'm here to give you some quick fire tips, some 20 tips in particular. I don't know why I did that, but 20 tips. And this is based on my own insider knowledge. So I'm giving you some insider information here so that next time, if you need to go and seek health advice or have a doctor's appointment or see a healthcare professional, this can help you navigate the whole process a lot more smoothly. So without jabbering on, I'm just going to crack on. Number one, think about what it is you actually want from your appointment. What I mean by that is, you know, prior to going to see anybody or see any doctor, there's usually an outcome that you want. Is it that you want a referral? Is it that you want a blood test, a prescription for some medication, or just even just reassurance? That helps you frame your expectations around the appointment and the only way you can get what you want is if you know what you want to begin with. I understand that it may not be fully clear, especially if you're not sure what's going on to begin with, but take some time to have a think about what the outcome, you know, the likely, you know, your desired outcome. And by knowing that you're much more likely to get it. Number two is to do your homework. Now, what do I mean by this? I mean to be, be prepared prior to your appointment. Take some time to just have a think about your symptoms and try and anticipate some of the questions that your doctor or your healthcare provider will ask you about your symptoms. So, um, you know, things like how long it's been there for, the duration, does it come and go? Have you tried any medicines? Is it um, at a particular time that it comes on? You know, the more specific and the more focused you are about these um, symptoms, the better and the easier it is for me to try and figure out what's going on. So let me give you an example. Let's say I've got some stomach pain. Now, before going to a doctor, rather than just going in and then the doctor asking you and you having to say, um, I'm not sure. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh yeah, it comes on for two weeks. It's usually helpful if you go in and you know the doctor is able to say what's going on well i've had this pain for two weeks i've tried some ibuprofen it doesn't really work it comes on i notice it comes on specifically in the evenings um, especially when i've eaten you know those kind of things that gives me more information and i as a doctor i can then go and make a more accurate assessment of your issue rather than having to tease and pry all this information one by one and i'm just going to throw this out that throw this in there um the other thing that um is a bugbear of mine is when people say i've had it going on for a while now what's a while what's a while to you you know it's not specific i deal with specific time frames so tell me you know it's been going on for one week it's been going on for one month it's been going on for one year give me more specific time frames if you can because one person's a while might be two hours another person's a while might be two years so try and avoid using that phrase it's been going on for a while you know and i understand that sometimes things gradually build up and you're not specifically aware of the time frame but even if you said oh a couple of months or it's been going on for about a year or it's been going on for six months roughly it's all right to approximate and estimate but try and, and avoid vague answers if you can 
and a while is one of those specific you know those specific ones that yeah it, it does um, get me triggered number three is to be on time please be on time for your appointment I really, you know, I really shouldn't have to labor this point. I think it's quite obvious and quite apparent. I think it shows respect for somebody else's time, especially as a health professional, then for you to be on time for your appointment. Um, I know people say, oh, well, my GP is running late, so I'm just going to turn up late as well. Yes, but the reason I, I personally, I hate running late. Okay, whenever I'm seeing people, I try and stick to the time. And there's several reasons why I end up re running late. There might be an unexpected emergency or something happens. But really and truly, from your perspective, though, I know it's um, coming across as um, being um, lecturing. But please be on time. Please, 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 please be on time. Number four is avoid the supermarket shopping list. And I say this with love. I see a lot of people that come in and what they usually say is, oh, well, I hardly ever come to see the doctors. So what I've done is I've got a long list and I've saved up everything for this appointment. I wish I could do everything in that appointment. Unfortunately, for reasons I'm going to explain, it's not possible. One is that I have... And nationally, in the UK, I can't speak for other countries, but I have 10 minutes to see a patient. 10 minutes. Realistically, how much can I see and deal with in 10 minutes? It's not realistic. I understand that people don't just come in with one issue or that, and a lot of things are related. But if you feel that there's several things you want to talk about, then the best thing is when you're booking your appointment, is to ask if they can offer you a multiple appointment session or what we refer to as a double appointment. Now, this, this gives you a bit more time. Again, it's not unlimited, but at least you've got more time then and the doctor also has more time to deal with your health issues. Number five, be honest. Yes, it's a shame that I'm having to say this point, but you would be surprised by the amount of people that... Um, that fabricate things, exaggerate things, or withhold things. And the only person you're really sabotaging is yourself if you do that. I understand that, you know, it can seem like, oh, you know, I need to kind of make something happen or something, you know, otherwise I'm going to be waiting weeks and nobody's going to see me. Well, at least if I do it this way, I'm going to get referred. I'm going to get this, that, 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 that. It doesn't work like that. It's my job to assess and prioritize what needs to be seen now and what can be seen, you know, maybe weeks from now. And by omitting or exaggerating or fabricating things, what you're doing is that you're opening yourself up to having incorrect treatment. The other thing is that a lot of people worry that, oh, am I going to tell the information? What's going to happen with my information? Doctors, we have a sworn duty to confidentiality. This applies in the UK and I'm sure it applies in the USA with the, um, I think it's called the HIPA laws. But we have, you know, as soon as I qualify, I'm sworn to keep all the information that you give me in these four walls private. And I'm actually legally at risk if I go around saying something. So if it's something that is relevant, it doesn't matter whether it's embarrassing, if it's very private, it's something that you're sh ashamed about. Or it's something that I should really tell you off or don't drink, don't smoke. Tell me, because if it's something that's going to affect your treatment and your healthcare, then I need to know about it. Number six, dress for success. And by that, I mean dress appropriately. It's, a, it's more than likely when you go to see a doctor that you will be examined. So let's say you're going in with a cough or with a pain in your knee. What I will do as part of the process is first ask you some questions about it and get an idea. But then part of my overall assessment is for me to actually examine the actual area that's bothering you. And you will have a much easier time if you're already prepared to be examined. So let's say in the example of knee pain, wearing skinny jeans, that means you'll have to kind of remove everything down, you know, from the top down. Whereas if you're wearing looser fit jeans, 
you may just be able to roll it up and I can have a look at that knee. And again, people that come in and they have to have their blood pressure checked. Again, if you can wear um, a pair of, um, you know, a shirt that allows you to just roll up your sleeve easier, that's better rather than having to take or remove an entire top. Um, and for women, if you're going to have a pelvic exam, a pap smear, wearing a dress, which means that it's easier to just, um, you know, get ready rather than having to take several layers off, off, off and on. So all these will help to facilitate your appointment and make things a lot easier for you and for the doctor. Number seven, which is a follow on to number six, and that is, I don't really care. I don't care whether you're shaved, not shaved, whether you're waxed or not waxed, whether you're moisturized, not moisturized, whether you've got smelly armpits or no smelly armpits, I don't care, all right? Now, I don't mean that in a rude way. I mean it in a way to take the pressure off you, which is my job is to go where I'm concerned about. I don't care about all, you know, whether it's not that you're preparing for a date. I don't need a full face of makeup, everything else. I just need to examine where I need to examine. So hopefully that takes some of the pressure off you. Number eight, you don't need an audience. Now, what I mean by this is try not to come with a whole group of people. While it's okay to come with, you know, a partner, a spouse, a parent for support or to make sure that you, you know, you get your, your say and you say exactly what you mean, coming in with a whole group of people can be very distracting for me. And especially if you've got young children, you know, they're running around. I'm trying to examine this person, but this person is running around. I need to make sure that they're not touching um, equipment, plug sockets, tripping. It can be very confusing and distracting for me. And again, it, it's not ideal. I understand that, you know, especially with women that have children, it can be difficult to get childcare arrangements and get somebody else to look at the child whilst you're coming to see the doctor. But if you can make alternative arrangements, then it's often better. Number nine is to listen, listen, listen to your doctor. They've had at least 10 years of training They've gone through five to seven years of medical school. They've also had, after medical school, several years of training to get to this point, having sat lots of medical examinations and done different medical rotations and also gained experience all along the way. So before you get to the person that's sat in front of you, that's taken years of training. So what that means is that whenever they suggest a course of treatment or a decision that's usually based on their background their education and their experience whilst it's okay to disagree with what they've said or want a second opinion it's also important to be respectful of what their profession of their profession and their advice number 10 sometimes you may come away with nothing at all by that, it might be that you don't get a prescription or you don't get a treatment or you don't get a referral or a scan. Now, whilst this can feel confusing or you might feel that your expectations are not being met, following on from point nine, the doctor should have explained the reason for this. And a lot of times we're so caught up, we want something quickly, we want something now, we want a quick fix, I'm ill, I've got a cough, I need to get some antibiotics, or I need to get a referral, or I need to get a scan. But a lot of times, the right medicine is no medicine at all. Number 11, your doctor may sometimes use internet resources. Now, the, this doesn't make them a bad doctor or that they're just referring to Dr. Google because they don't know what they're talking about. Medicine as a specialty is rapidly evolving. It's, you know, even five years ago, 10 years ago, things that we used to do have changed so rapidly and there's so much out there. It's impossible to keep all of that in your head. And even if you try, by the time you've memorized everything you possibly can, it's out of date and people are doing something else or there's a new medication out there. The internet is 
a way that we use to access all this information and we have access to guidelines we ha have access to medicine uh, information about medicines we have access to so many things now i'm not ashamed to say that i do use um online resources and particularly when it comes to things that i have to have specific knowledge about things like drug doses risks and side effects or the most up-to-date guidance or information that's available things that impact on your health things that i'm sure that you'd rather me check for rather than rely on information that i learned 10 years ago and making a mistake so that's the way i see it there's nothing wrong with your doctor using the most um, the most up-to-date information to make sure that you're getting the right care and treatment number 12 and I'm expecting this one to generate some interesting comments and to be a bit controversial for some. And that is, you cannot demand a specific treatment and your doctor is not obligated to follow your specific demands. Whenever you have any treatment, that will be based on the recommendations of your doctor and what your own personal views and opinions are. And like I said, in an ideal world, both of these things are on the same page and you go ahead and you have a treatment that you're happy with and also your doctor recommends as being effective and safe unfortunately there are times where these things don't meet in the middle you know you might want one thing or you feel that you're entitled to one thing and your doctor thinks oh actually that's not effective or it's not safe or whatever reason that they have for it hopefully you can kind of meet somewhere in the middle and compromise and that's also an art you know the art of compromise but do not think that if your doctor says, I'm not able to give you that treatment, you can then go and um, pursue a claim or there will be some kind of a, um, um, a way of forcing them to do what you want. However, you do have opportunities to get a second opinion. You can always see another doctor. You can always complain if you're unhappy and you feel that you've not been treated with respect or anything else, but you cannot make somebody do something that you want that's the long and short of it number 13 we are only human understand that the person that's in front of you is also a human being with their own feelings emotions and they get upset and angry just like you do as well so don't treat them like they're riffraff or you know a servant waiting for your orders be respectful be kind Talk to them as you would like to be talked to. And by that, I mean no physical aggression, no threats, no verbal abuse. Unfortunately, the statistics around violence towards healthcare staff is worrying, with trends in the UK showing that this is rising. And the last, um, the most up-to-date figures I've got here was from 2017. And that shows that on average, there's about 200 reported incidents on um, every day towards NHS staff. So the NHS operates a zero tolerance um, policy. And that means that any violence, any physical, verbal or aggressive behavior against members of staff will be taken very seriously. Number 14. <coughs> 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 Cover your mouth when you cough, all right? That's just basic hygiene. And your parents should have taught you that when you were growing up. If they didn't, I'm telling you now. You would be astounded by the amount of people when I'm up close in their face, see no problems in coughing in my face and I'm having to breathe in all these germs. It's just respectful and it's hygienic and it's just common sense just cover your mouth please or if you have to just say excuse me or just look to the, the other side and just cough all right so please for the rest of us humans who don't really want to breathe in your germs cover your mouth or use a handkerchief or just you know if you can't then excuse yourself to the bathroom and cough it's the decent thing to do number 15 it's okay to do your own research. In fact, I don't mind it. I don't mind it at all. It's actually quite helpful for me and it shows that you are somebody that's motivated to take control of their own health. However, 
this comes with a warning. Be careful where you research. Be aware that not everything that you read is true. So if possible, try and stick to um, more regulated sources of information. Number 16, take control of your own health. After all, these are things that are affecting you personally. I can be there to support you. I can advise on the treatment. I can say we need to try this medication, that medication. But ultimately, you are the one in the driving seat of your own health. What that means is that if I suggest that we need to try this or you need to stop smoking, we need to reduce the drinking, we need to lose weight, we need to try this, and you're not doing all of that, and you're still expecting something to magically happen, you need to be in charge. You need to follow things through. And, you know, the common quote is insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. It's not going to happen. So you need to be in control. Number 17, be patient and be realistic. As as much as we want it to, and we want, you know, referrals to happen overnight and blood tests and x-rays and scans to happen, 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 happen. We need it happening now. We need to realize that a lot of these healthcare systems handle huge volumes of people, paperwork, bureaucracy, everything. So there's often um, waiting times and there's a waiting list for a lot of different things. However, the system is designed though that you're not left out and you should be seen when it's your turn in the appropriate manner. However, if, you're, uh, if you feel that things are taking much longer or there's a delay or things change in your, in your symptoms, my advice would always be to go back to whoever referred you or your healthcare provider. There's usually, you know, they should give you information about contact numbers, the procedure so that you're kept informed every step of the way. Number 18, I'm not a dentist. So if you have an infected tooth, a dental abscess, anything to do with your teeth, your gums, the best person to see is a dentist or an emergency dental practitioner. If it's um, you know, weekends or week, um, evenings and they're not, and your regular dentist is not open. It doesn't happen as much now, but it used to happen a lot where people would come in to see me because they can't get an appointment with a dentist and they're worried that they've got a tooth abscess or they've got an infection. Before we used to give in antibiotics for that, but nowadays we don't. And this may shock a lot of people or surprise a lot of people who still go to see their doctor. The reason for this is it's actually a matter of safety. Whenever you go to see any healthcare provider or I give you any prescription or any medication, I'm giving you that medication on the basis that I understand what I'm giving it for. And I understand how it's going to work for that condition. Because I'm not a dentist, I'm giving, I might give you antibiotic, but I have no idea about dental infections. I don't know about you know, what's the right thing to do. At the very most, I'm doing this and I'm kind of just vaguely giving you a prescription. It's not right and it's not safe. So please, please, please respect your time and go where you need to go. And that is to the dentist. Number 19, treat other staff such as hospital clerks, secretaries, radiographers, um, you know, hospital porters, um, GP receptionists, um, admin clerks, all these people that you encounter at every stage of your journey with respect. They do a massive job, a massive job, and they're often not recognized for what they do. Without them, everybody just zooms in and they say, oh, it's the doctor, it's the doctor. I can't work in a system by myself. And they are also there to support and they have a very important role to play. So appreciate them, be respectful of them and value their contribution to the NHS and to your healthcare system. Number 20, appreciate the NHS. And I'm going to speak about the NHS because that's where I work and that's my bias. But the NHS is unique. Think about it. How many people work in the system? How many people that you encounter during 
one stage or the other with yourself or family members. And these are all made up of people um, that are working for this system and this service. In this society and the world we live in now, we are so ready to complain, 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 whenever anything goes wrong. But let's think about it. How ready and how easy are we to then go back and also in the same token say thank you you know thank you for looking after me thank you for referring me for that treatment thank you for um, doing that thank you for treating my mother it doesn't have to be a dramatic gesture or something grand some simple token like a thank you card or something would always mean the world to people like me that work you know and it's good to get good feedback as well so i encourage you that as well as you know, reporting back on bad service or bad um, issues or complaints, be just as willing to highlight good, um, good examples and praise people. It does make my day when somebody has taken that time to come back and thank me or give me a card. I always store these things, and it's really, you know, it really, it really does warm my heart when people do that because, unfortunately. I see hundreds of people, I'm sure lots of people see, you know, they come in and they see their doctors, they see nurses, but how many of you go back and say thank you in a meaningful way, not just the thanks, 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 but in a meaningful way that shows that you've made it intentional. So I would encourage you, you know, if you've had bad service, obviously complain and make it, you know, and raise that up through the necessary channels. But also if you've had good service, it's also to feed that back and make the people that have contributed to that good service aware of what they're doing, because it'll make sure that they also keep doing that. So that's it guys for my 20 top tips. I hope you found them really interesting insightful and thought provoking. I'm sure some of them might generate a bit of um, feedback. And if you had anything to say about it, then please just comment below. I'll make sure to read and respond, you know, with to any comments that come up. Also, if you felt there were other things that I should have included in that list, I know 20 is not an exhaustive list. I'm sure there's other things out there. Then again, post that below. Please feel free to subscribe and share this video with others you think would find it interesting. I look forward to hearing more from you. Comment with anything else, any other topics for any videos that you'd like to hear more about. And stay tuned. Take care.